Well, it's all good afternoon. It is the 1st of April. No joke, it has snow today. It's spring. Awesome. Um, as you can see, we have a lovely array of scaffolding and ladders. I've got some bags of plaster, some Lutec long, which is supposed to last a long time, but it does not. Not this particular batch, because we've already been using it on other jobs. <gasps> oh look, there's my smash window. One day I'll fix you. Okay, so the plan is, is Nick's coming tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, eight o'clock. We're gonna plaster this whole big wall, 4.4 meters at the highest point. So I've got to rig up a scaffolding system that would get us all the way up there, but also not be in the way for when we do these lower sections. So um, I'm literally just gonna set it up. So this is a before. <laughs> Da, 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 da. I think it looks like a dog's training ground, a slightly oversized one. Um, yes, it's a bit sketchy looking, but for highly skilled artisans like ourselves, it will be very easy. Basically, that step ladder will go to there, that plank will slide across. I can get to that section. Off the ladder, we can do that section from the top. We can do all of that. I've left enough room so we can do that section there. The step ladder over there, I can step between the two and do that section. So, um, yeah, extra space tomorrow when Nick turns up. Right, it's eight o'clock in the morning. Nick's here. We are all set up outside, ready to go. So, like I said, we're going to be using the Lutec Long, which isn't going to last long, is it, Nicholas? No. no. Um, where is it? So, they have a date. This is 14th, 5th, 11th, 2021, which means that's when it was manufactured. Anything after six months, it can be a bit uh, quick setting. This is five months old and it goes off really quick. So um, the trick is with this stuff, plenty of water in before you chuck your powder in. Keep it wet, mix it, mix it, keep it wet and then thicken it up right towards the end. Because if you don't, it just ends up all bitty and it's just real shit. So um, we're going to get a mix on and start slapping it on the wall as quick as possible. on how to plaster, this is a lesson how to use Lutec. So, I've got it, a nice creamy mix, not too thick, not too sloppy, you don't want it going anywhere. Right, let's get it on the walls. Okay, that was 21 minutes for me and Nick to get that whole first coat on. There will be no rest and we know that because we've been using bags of this gear already. So what we do is quickly clean our kit, flatten it all off and then we'll wait. I'll tell you what we're waiting for. Okay, so the plaster's been on the wall a few minutes. We've just cleaned all our kit up. We know from experience it's better to just flatten it off straight away. Sometimes, you know, if it was multi, for example, you can leave it a little bit and then flatten it because it stays quite wet. This does not normally stay very wet for long. Um, I use a refiner 18 inch Superflex. Nix uses the Ox Superflex, both great tools. It's just Nix got an Ox with Ox, and I've got a refiner. Um, so we now just go over the whole lot and flatten it off really nice because the better job you do on the first coat, the easier it is to finish off your second coat. Take that white Nicholas. Don't be a young man. Young ring. 
Right, that was another 13 minutes of flattening off. Um, we are now wait probably a few minutes, literally, and then it'll be ready for a second coat. I'll take you up close so you can see what I'm on about. Okay, so on the bags, it even says two hours of usage, which you would assume means you've got about two hours to work it. Well, it took us half hour to put it on. Well, it didn't, did it? It took us 20 minutes to put it on. If that was another, say, 12 minutes of flatten it off. So. If we add all that up together, let's say 40 minutes, yeah, in total to get to this stage. Now, this was the last bit we did. Now look, watch. I don't know how clearly you can see that, but what we're looking for is that to be touched, not touch dry, but just so it's ready to put another coat on. So it's just slightly wet so you can get this, which means it's literally ready to have a second coat on which means you don't get no rest. So you've got all this big water, you've just put it on, you can really do with a cup of tea if you drink tea, I'll have a glass of water myself, and um, have a bit of a rest. But no, this stuff just goes off so quick, you can literally coat up. And it's inconsistent as well, you get dry patches here, there and everywhere, and yet the plasterboard was all put on at the same time. It's brand new plasterboard, it's not been covered in dust or anything. We were chatting to a fellow builder um, yesterday about it, and he did actually say a lot of the time what they do is um, PVA the whole plasterboard again or SBR it because then that really controls the suction. Um, but that's extra work, you shouldn't have to do that. But if you're watching this video to learn about how to use Lutec and you're not very good at plastering, then I must admit I would 100% recommend coating your whole new plasterboard wall in a PVA water down mix or SBR just to give you a bit of time. Um, obviously me and Nick have been doing this for years and we're pros at it, so it's not too big a deal. But yeah, you could really get yourself in trouble, so be warned. Right, we'll come back when we're going to do the second coat. Okay, so we're about to put the second coat on. We do it slightly wetter than the first, just as it glides over a lot easier. This is basically going to be a repeat of the first video that you've seen of us just putting the gear on. minutes that time obviously it's always a bit quick on the second coat glides across a lot easier right we're flatten off and then we patiently wait okay we've just cleaned up all the kit again um, just it's all about judging when it comes to plastering so you've got to judge if it's worthwhile like you know waiting a bit longer to flatten off but we know this gear so we've been using it so what we're gonna do is flatten it off straight away so it's now just gone half past nine, so it's been an hour and a half since we started. We've coated up the whole wall twice, we're ready to flatten off, so it's going really well. What's going to happen now is you just got to be patient, so we're flattening it off, and then you wait, and you just keep on waiting, and basically what you're going to be doing is just touching the plaster every now and then, keeping an eye on it, and you basically want it touch dry, probably so you're seeing the odd dry patch here and there, and that's then when you want to start finishing it off you know getting the flat finish to it and stuff we use sponge floats it's controversial for some people some people agree with it some people don't some people use brushes some people use sprayers we use all three depending on the situation because obviously we go get lots of different uh, backgrounds you know a variety of backgrounds you know the other day we were doing you know old painted walls brand new brickwork brand new plasterboard all on the same wall so it just depends um, but we do it and one of the reasons we use a sponge float is because it's a white plaster your eyes struggle to see the hollows as we call them and or any, any defects because after a while it's like snow blind 
you can't really see what you're seeing so all you're seeing is just like this big white mass so if you sponge float it what we normally do is like meter sections at a time float it up just once flatten it off move to the next end move to the next station move to the next station and that way you can guarantee you won't have hollows in your wall if you do it that way once you've done that then we just wait again really wait and then we do a brush finish just you know finish it off and polish it up um, don't put too much water in it will bubble up you don't want it bubbling up it's not a big deal if it does bubble up basically flatten it off as best you can and then when the walls all dry you can just go over with a bit of 120 grit and it flattens off easy so it's not a big deal right we're going to flatten off okay dokely it is now 10 o'clock it's been two hours since we started um, it's all been flattened off and it's already probably better than 80% of the walls in the whole of France <laughs> Um, so watch, see now, barely any plaster's coming off where it's sucking in and drying. What we need that to be is so it doesn't leave prints, because at the moment it's leaving prints. So what we want that is pretty much, not bone block dry, but on its way there. And then we're just gently float up a little bit, flatten it back down. Once we've done that, that's when we just wait to wait until it's basically gone off. And then we'll just brush it up a little bit, polish it up, flatten it off. Jobs are good. Oh, hi there. Is that your biggest fan? No, it's a little bear. They give it to me. Oh, nice. Okay. What do you think of Daddy's plastering so far? Good. Thank you. Unscripted. Okay, it's now half past ten. I've been uh, flattening off and sponge floating over that side. Nick's been doing this section. I'm just about to do this lower section, so I thought I'd give you a quick demo. Right, my finishing trial and putting on trial is a Marshalltown Extra Light Gold um, Perma Shape. It's one of the go-to trials most people <coughs> use. Um, for sponge floating, I use a tile cleaning kit because they're really handy. And what I do is I put the sponge in and I just keep on rolling it until there's barely any water on it. You don't want it soft and wet. So squeeze out all the excess. And like I said, this isn't a plastering lesson. It's just showing you how we put our Lutec on. So. Basically, just give it a quick wipe over. It should, you, can, you won't be able to really see it. It's juddering slightly where the gear is quite dry, and that's what you're sort of looking for. You don't want it to be sopping wet. Sometimes we do do it when it's a bit wet. If we're on different substrates and we've been having a bit of a hard time, and we do that just to give it a, an even finish all over. Basically, I just do a little section like that, looking for any hollows, and just work them out a little bit. And then it's just a case of troweling it, like you normally would. The reason we don't do big, big areas and float, uh, float them all up is the stuff's going off quick, and you do a big area. You end up missing bits, but you don't realise it, and then you obviously have the sponge marks on the wall, which are just as bad as having the hollows and stuff. So that's why we do the smaller bits. example with this Lutec you get what we call little boulders and literally that's like a mill of stone so sometimes you'll be traveling up like we are now and you're just suddenly here and there'll just be a huge line in your plaster work and that's literally where one of the boulders just works its way to the surface and then you uh, scrape it along your nice finish okay so that's that lower section then all we do same again Wet the sponge up again, take all the excess off. 
and the thing is, is it's no different. This is why we find it funny when people say, aren't oh, we shoot sponge cloak? It's no different than this. Right, traditionally, people would use the uh, what's that called? Brush. Right. And they'd go like this. Flicking brush. They literally, flicking brush. They do that, they do the same thing. There's literally, there's no difference in it. Don't work as good though with a brush. Eh? Don't work as good with a brush. See, there you go, from a pro. Don't work as good. The thing is, is with these modern day sponges with the handles integrated, it's just an easier way to do it, you know, work smart, not hard as they say. <coughs> Good thing about it as well is you can run it down the bead, that cleans all your snots off the bead as well. Me and Nick have been saying this job for a Saturday has been going ridiculously well. Far too well. It's going too well, we're always suspicious. We won't put it down to our professionalism, we just put it down to something's not right in the world. Like I'm having to press two handed because my wrist has been hurting because we've been plastering like all week so it's a bit painful at the moment. But if you do a good job and get it flat on that first coat and second coat, when it comes to finishing it off, you really shouldn't have to work that hard. It should just be a case of working your magic, filling any little imperfections, polishing the plaster up, and getting that nice flat finish that we all want. And the good thing is I train myself to be ambidextrous, so I can also get in this way as well. <laughs> Right, we're gonna come back when we're on the final polish. Okay, it's now 11.30. What's your head, young lady? Um, me and Sky are now gonna do the final finish. We're gonna do the final trowel up, aren't we? Yeah. Because Nick's gone home. Yeah. yeah, and what do you say? You're gonna help. Yeah. You're gonna replace Nick. Yeah. yeah, so you're gonna take daddy's trowel and you're gonna do the first. Yeah, yeah you're gonna show him how to do it? Okay, we do this bit of wall down here. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Okay, so now for final polish, we just use the brush. So Sky's gonna wet the wall a little bit. So don't lean on the wall, because it's still a bit wet. So here's the brush. And what we need you to do is, can you stand here? Because everybody on the camera needs to see you do it. So just brush up and down the wall a little bit. That's it. Nice big brush strokes. Nice bit more. Nice. Bit more. That's it. Right, now Daddy do a little bit. Yeah. Okay, ready? See if Daddy goes up and down, big brush strokes. Yeah, you see that? What is that board? This is my trowel for making the wall look all nice and flat and pretty. Yeah. Hello, hello. Okay, so what Daddy's going to do is just go to the first set. So you can hear that crisp sound. That's the plastic nice and hard now. So what we're doing is just a second. Any defects that we can see. We just take a little bit of fat off the top, which is this bit, and then we just fill it. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Okay, so hold it flat like that. That's it. Just a slight angle, and like that. Nice. Do it again. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, that is a soft bit. You hold the handle, daddy hold the angle. Go. Back again. Back again. Nice. Okay, do you want to just stand over there a minute because daddy's just got to finish us off. But I want to bring it 
Yeah, I know, but what it is, is it's going off and Danny doesn't have a lot of time to make it look good. Okay, you do the brushing? Yeah. It's not very wet. Yeah, get some more water on it. Okay, well, no, no, put that back, put that back, please. Because that'd be too much water. You want to hold this? Stand out the way of the camera. No, that's it, darling. No, 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 no stop, please. Please stop. Because if you put too much water on it, it's not a good thing. I know you're trying to help and you're doing a very, very good Dad, job. Go yeah. do, do it on the wall over there. Yeah. Just, just a little bit. Okay, so now me and Sky will continue to just walk along and finish off. So that's basically it. Like once that's done, the whole room's finished. We haven't got to do no more, no messing around with it. We're really happy with it. Like Nick said, that's probably one of the best Saturday jobs we've done. It went very well. Even though we knew the gear was going to go off quick, we were prepared for it. So we acted accordingly. But yeah, I'll just do this final trial up. And we'll come back in the next exciting video where we'll be painting this wall. Awesome.